Hello and we're at the Geneva Watch Days and behind me is occurring now the official press conference for the relaunch and it's not an actual relaunch because this brand Favre Le Bas has been existing since ever. It's one of the oldest brands in Switzerland but it's entering a new cycle. A very important uh, uh, new adventure is about to start but we were privileged enough to go a few days back in Grenchen to meet Mr. Patrick Hoffman who unclosed everything about this new adventure. Let's go. All right, Patrick, it's really nice to see you back at the helm of a little brand, a brand of, with plenty of history, plenty of legitimacy. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for coming. So before diving into uh, where you want to take uh, the, the brand, uh, let's go back a little bit indeed on the, on the history, uh, because it's, I mean, it's, a, it's a very important name of the Swiss watchmaking industry. But of course, it's a new venture for me. I had to put myself into it first and study what happened uh, in the past. And for me, it was amazing to learn about the history, which is so rich and the legacy. So there's so much I could talk about about the past and there's so much which we can do in the future. It, it's a really a pleasure and an honor for me to lead such a brand. Yeah. And it's one of the uh, I mean, long lasting brand of the industry. It's one of the orders basically that has had an uninterrupted history. That's part of what makes me proud of it, because there was an uninterrupted history. It's uh, the second oldest brand, 1737, almost 290 years, and actually always in business. Uh -huh. And uh, not on a small scale, there were years where Favre Loba was producing many, many timepieces in big quantities. And what were kind of the uh, important milestone uh, of the brand, and obviously some of the iconic models that were produced? Of course, you go to the past, you go to the pocket watches, but uh, looking into the recent history and people who know me a little bit, they know I always look at power reserve of timepieces. So there was a milestone with a double barrel uh, where they set, uh, the people from Favre Lerba set the milestone. Now when I went out and I started to talk to collectors and there are many fans and, and, and collectors of Favre Lerba, the name Bivok always came up. And um, Bivouac is in my heart now. It is something which we have to revive and which we will revive. Can you remind us a bit the particularity of that uh, piece? The Bivouac was the first uh, timepiece to measure altitudes. Uh, it worked with a barometer. So it was also at that time uh, when there was no GPS and not uh, weather forecast like we have it today. It was a safety device for climbers because if there was a drop in uh, air pressure, they, um, they would know they have to do something or they have to get into a secure place. So that's one of them. Another piece which we are celebrating now for the re relaunch is the, um, the Deep Blue that was uh, launched in 1964. It was the first uh, diving watch for Favre and an important diving watch in the history in the watch industry. So we're celebrating the 60th anniversary. Deep Blue, it's also very interesting and cool name and there are many more of course which I could list up. So those were watches that really had kind of a, a functional uh, reason of being. I mean it was not only time telling, it, it had other features. Yeah? I think Favre Loeba particularly probably in the last 50-60 years was also associated with uh, not only timepieces but also instruments. Yeah. And for me every timepiece is actually an instrument but Favre Loeba had that kind of written on their flag. Uh -huh. So let's talk about today and especially tomorrow, uh, because I mean there are some serious ambitious, uh, ambitions uh, behind uh, this kind of relaunch. I mean we're talking relaunch, but that, as we said, it's uninterrupted. But nonetheless, now is uh, we're looking at a, a new phase in the life of the uh, of the brand. So tell us a little bit about that. Where are you taking it? We worked very hard for the last uh, one year, and we are ready to launch a new collection with 22 timepieces. Uh, during Geneva watch days. Mm -hmm. uh, we are sitting here really in a startup, which is also very interesting and cool for me because it's a startup ambition which we have. It's a startup team. Uh, we have some um, older people, I would call it, or veterans, but we also have a very young team on the other side. And we are sitting here where the future office, where the future T2 and after sales service is going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, we have enough space, you see that here. Uh, we are ready to uh, go on with the renovation. 
And the ambition of Fava Loba, I think I want to make that very clear, is not to be a boutique brand or a niche brand, but to be a um, brand that is going to produce thousands and thousands of pieces. I would almost call it an, um, uh, a commercial time piece. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, and coming obviously with this uh, volume ambition at a price point that is going to be also quite, I mean, low. I don't, I don't say low in a, in a bad way, but I mean, it's something that is a bit more uh, accessible. Well, I think uh, when we looked at Favre Leba, we were thinking of what we are going to do. There was, there was that one challenge uh, where we had to pick up, because the history is so deep, uh, which timepieces are we going to revive first? Uh, because the names which are out there in the past, uh, that was a challenge to choose. Where I didn't see a challenge was in the time um, structure where we are going to be and where we are going to um, have the, the price range of our timepiece because I think you have to be true to the past. Mm -hmm. And with a price range of about 2,200 Swiss francs to 5,000 Swiss francs, where we're we going to start, there will be some exceptions. We are right at the point where Fava Laba belongs to on the one side. And on the other side, I think we just hit the nail also where the market is today. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you have big plans, and we talked a little bit before, and uh, you, you see really down the road, and you have this 10, 15 year uh, plan uh, uh, ahead of you. Uh, but for the initial couple of years, what, so what are the kind of the, the, the collections that you're going to come up with? So in uh, Geneva, in uh, two weeks, we're going to show uh, a collection which consists of three families, three lines. There's going to be at least one more line next year, 2025. Um, I'm already very proud and happy to say that the Biwak will be re revived the uh, end of 2025, if everything goes well. Uh, right now, we have about 4,000 timepieces in production. And that um, is now the start for the first year, and this will grow. Uh -huh. And you're not taking this kind of vintage, too inspired road. I mean, obviously, there's a legacy that you can build on, but there is also kind of a reinterpretation a bit of the models. I mean, the design element is important. Of course, when you take on a brand like Favre Loba with that history and with such interesting timepieces from the past, it would have been easy to just copy paste. Yeah. Um, that was certainly a discussion which we had at the very beginning. I think it would have been the easy road. Of course. And um, you will see um, revival timepieces, vintage timepieces, but the majority of those 22 timepieces are really new timepieces which show already very clearly where the direction of the brand is going to be. So we're kind of at an early stage of uh, this ambitious uh, 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 program. And uh, so far, when you've talked with uh, people around, collectors or others, what has been the kind of the feedback of having this name, this illustrious name, coming back on the table? Well, first of all, I look at it as a responsibility, <laughs> you know, to take a name like this. There is, or there was a little bit of a nervousness because um, what is important when you have such a uh, history and such a legacy, you do not want to disappoint the collectors and the uh, people who love the brand. So I think you have to look for new customers, but you also have to make sure you're going to satisfy and not disappoint um, uh, the collectors of the past. And I think we did it. Uh, the response so far was nice. I'm also very happy that I made the decision to revive the um, BWOC early mm -hmm. because every person I meet <laughs> is asking me what's going to happen with the BWOC and that will be out relatively soon. Okay, well we still have to wait on that one but we know we're going into that direction. Great, well I thank you very much for having us and uh, best of luck with this uh, new endeavor. How are you taking it personally, per precisely? I take it very personally, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, it was nice to have you. And next time you come, you're going to see a different setup. And that's going to be really interesting to see this evolution. Uh, well, again, thank you very much. Best of luck. And well, see you soon. Thank you. Bye, guys. Yeah.